Micronutrients are called micro because they are needed in small quantities, not because they are unimportant to plants. Today we want to talk about some of the most important micronutrients, including zinc, iron, manganese, copper, and boron. Well, when you think about what you need to do on your field to maximize profitability and maximize yield, the first thing you have to get done is getting your soil right and getting the right balance of nutrients out there. And if you're a high yield producer in the United States, chances are you've got the N, P, and K, and sulfur all worked out. So you're getting the right amounts of those big nutrients. Now we move on to the micronutrients. And when we think about the micros, they are so important in many of the functions going on in the plant. So yes, we need those big buildings blocks with the NPK and sulfur. Now we need all the micros that are out there to get every one of those functions to work better. All right, so here are a couple of ways that we can help you besides just talking about it on the show today. Number one, we've got the agphdsoiltest.com website or the AgPhD Soil Test app. You can look at these and if you're doing good soil tests in your farm, you're using this for soil testing, you can see what our recommendations would be for each of these different micronutrients. The other thing is take a look at the AgPhD Fertilizer Removal app. Then you'll know how much of each of these nutrients are needed. And what you're gonna find is the quantities are really ridiculously tiny. It might be five hundredths of a pound per acre. I mean, you think about five hundredths of a pound across an entire acre, that's not much. So every crop has a little bit different nutrient needs. In most cases, we're talking very small quantities here. But what can happen with some of these micronutrients is if you don't have your soil levels up to a certain point, even if you throw out the tenth of a pound or five hundredths of a pound that you need for your crop, it might get tied up by some other nutrients. So we talk a lot about trying to have overall balance of nutrients in the soil and don't get too confused or don't think it's incredibly complicated. We've got a lot more information for you. We can talk to you about that. And if you ever have specific questions, you can call us any day. We take live phone calls on our Ag PhD radio show at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. So we're happy to talk to you on the phone. We're happy to answer your email questions. We just want you to learn more about these micronutrients because they are really important to crop production. Okay, so we only need small amounts of, of each of these micronutrients. The big risk that you face here is, I want to address zinc or I want to address copper or, or any of the micros. Well, you only need such a small amount and you may only be applying a pound or a couple of pounds per acre across the farm. How are you going to get that spread without overdoing it? And then how are you going to work with somebody like my brother that doesn't have a whole lot of patience? And he may say, well, you only need a pound. Let's just put on five or 10 because that way I'm done for a long time and I don't have to worry about this. Well, you don't want to do that. Yeah, but the other side of it is, okay, if I put some of these things on the soil, it's going to be a year or two before they're going to show up much on your soil test. It just takes time for them to get down, to break down, to become active. And really we're, we're looking at three different methods here. Number one is, hey, I can broadcast the micronutrients I need, either liquid or dry, whatever you choose to do, and do that on a big scale. You could also ban your micronutrients, smaller rates, either blended micronutrients or specific micronutrients, either in furrow or near the seed, like a two by two. If you're gonna go in furrow though, make sure you keep your rates low and talk to an agronomist before you do this because we're concerned about seed safety. The third choice is you could do some foliar feeding. If you're gonna do foliar feeding though, the important thing to remember is it's hard to get much into plants in one shot. So the best success that you can have with foliar feeding usually means multiple applications. You see that a lot with the specialty crop growers. They might be spraying every week with very tiny doses of micronutrients. That's a good way to keep that crop fed if the soil doesn't have good levels. All right, and, and to avoid overdoing it, uh, we see a lot of this being done with liquids where you can spray it across the field. If you're going to do a dry spread and you're mixing it in with a, a big amount of N, P, and K, be very careful because you may have a granule of boron, for example, that's small and it sifts down through the load if you're spreading MAP or DAP or urea or something like that uh, and it ends up all coming out at one time, which could be a big problem. The other thing we see with micros is, all right, if you need a little bit of a few different micros, you're probably better off using a blended product. That way you won't overdo one in relation to another. If you way overdo one micronutrient, a lot of times you create a deficiency with another micronutrient that, that wants to get in through that plant through the same mechanism. All right, one last thing I think is worth mentioning. A lot of people think, you know what? I've got manure, so I don't need micronutrients. I get plenty of micronutrients through my manure. Well, you might, but unless you soil test, you don't really know. 
what we find very often is we see crazy high levels of a bunch of nutrients when manure has been applied for many years, and then we've got a couple specific things that might be short. And I don't know what those things are because I don't know what your ration is or anything else, but test your soil and also test your manure. That'll give you a good indication of what you need to supplement with because in many cases you might not need any more N, P, and K. It might be just one of those micronutrients that's limiting your yield. Well, I'm not saying that micronutrients are a silver bullet by any stretch, but if you've got the N, P, K, and sulfur taken care of, micronutrients, even at small quantities, may improve your yield significantly. The only way to find out is by taking a good soil test and following up with some plant tissue analysis as well. Another thing that could improve your yield significantly is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 